welcome to this uh, interview, an MVB Leaders Magazine interview of a man who has uh, declared himself um, to be interested and dedicated to the subject of sustainability. One, a subject, of course, very close to our hearts here in MVB, which we are trying to pursue and persuade as many people as possible to take the sustainable path. Um, and we're coming across a hotelier who's dedicated to this, uh, which is our other passion, um, is fantastic. So, uh, uh, Herman, if I may call you that. Yes, absolutely. I would be delighted uh, if you could answer some questions about how you got involved in sustainability. How did you get interested in this? So it's a very modern subject now, it's become quite fashionable, but it's very modern. How did you start in your dedication to sustainability? I, I think it came up from almost 20 years ago, I think, when I came to Indonesia. And at that time, I was actually based in Sumatra and we had the bush fires. And, and, and that was really like something that was 96, 97. And coming from Europe and of course not not having bushfires, no flooding. So the Netherlands, we are very fortunate to have a lot of dams and not much of flooding. So suddenly you come into Indonesia and you have the bushfires and you start to realize, hey, what's going on in here and why does it really happen? And as you are long enough in Indonesia, same as I, I am now, and, and with all the natural disasters happening in Indonesia, floodings, uh, deforestations, um, garbage, trash buildups, and so on. Uh, I think it's 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 really an eye opener and start thinking of hey, what can we do differently? How can we become a better person? And and as a company, then what can we do in our in our own little business to be better for the environment? That's uh, that's absolutely right. It is all around us here, both the man-made and the uh, the uh, the natural. Yeah. Um, but what aspects are you most interested in? Is, is it, as you said, is it the management of waste, which is a huge problem? Is it the saving of water, which again is a huge problem? The way in which we generate energy, what, what, do you, what interests you most? Um, at the moment, uh, especially in the hotel industry, I think, um, because the, the knife cuts on two sides, isn't it? Um, it? It's really water saving, energy saving, uh, and waste management. Uh, hotels are producing tremendous amounts of waste. And, and it's always a challenge and, and to try to convince the team, how can we do things differently? And, and, and I think in Indonesia, we are fortunate enough that, that people are very creative, isn't it? So, so there's always ways of disposing your, your, your waste to associations, to locals and, and they are creative enough to make something out of it. And, and that, that's always very nice to see. That's true. Hotels are yeah, notorious for um, being generous, shall we say, with their, with their goods and therefore generating a lot of waste. But now there's- Oh, a absolutely. And, and especially now with the new normal though, it's, it's, it's actually the new normal is giving us more waste. That's true as well. The, um, the plastic wrappings on to, to create plastic wrappings, takeaway boxes, buffets are being in takeaway, and and now we're looking at things. What can we do differently? How can we change from 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 plastic plastic wraps? How can we and still being hygienic enough to to, to be a five star hotel? And that's so what, a bit of a challenge. But one of the most important aspects of sustainability in the hotel business, and what have you in the Royal Amber Rukmo done so far? We'll come back and talk about the your fantastic hotel in a second, but what, what have you undertaken so far um, in the sustainability journey? Um, different kind of things. Um, again, as I said, look, looking at your waste, looking at, at your whole operation and see how can you reduce your, your plastic. Uh, plastic is everywhere in the hotel industry, as you know, your amenities, your straws, your plastic wraps. And, and most of the chefs, still, sadly speaking, uh, they are so used to plastic wraps and, and everything needs to be wrapped in plastic for whatever reason. They never think of doing different kinds of storage. So it's always an eye opener. So every time you move from one hotel to another hotel, you start again in that whole process of educating your staff, 
and what can you do differently? Um, I'm fortunate a lot, again, but, but I think other hotels as well, we have a huge garden. It's really looking at your own composting, um, your, your waste, your leftover food, your leaves which are falling from the trees. Uh, previously, it was always just being taken away and, and given away to someone. And nobody thought actually of, hey, we, we can do something out of that. I'm now even looking into ways of, of going, um, growing my own, my own, own vegetables, aquaponics, um, even I tried to, to investigate and see if it's possible with some local fish and catfish and, and, and see what we can do and how can we make it um, better. That's, that's a really important message you've got there. Quite a lot of people forget their own grounds as a use uh, to be used in their own farming, their own composting. So you, you've got a, you've hit a very nice track there. Um, there are ways, of course, now increasingly of getting rid of plastic bottles and so on and so forth. So that's going to be part of the whole, the whole um, journey for you as well, I'm sure. Of course, of course. And, and, and you're saving energy and, and see how you can do, do better and, and, and talk to suppliers again. But, but again, I think Indonesia is getting better now uh, over the last few years. But, but, but as you know, and I know, um, five years ago, it was actually quite hard to convince suppliers to change their plastic bottles into glass bottles. Indeed, that's true. And, and, and then you still had your audits and, and then even some audits from international hotel chains and or uh, local governments were saying as a five-star hotel, you still need to have certain amount of, of plastic in your rooms. And, and that, that, that's actually quite interesting sometimes to see. Um, uh, we have met quite a number of, of um, um, innovative hoteliers in this in our in our uh, role here as well, um, and some of them have shared their experiences with us. And it, it is a long, hard journey. Correct. Taking your ice cream containers, which are all plastic, and giving them to your vegetable suppliers and say, only use these as your supply um, containers. And it's lots of very good tricks. Yeah. Yeah, you, you really have to go to your supply chain and, and convince your suppliers as well. And, and um, especially in smaller cities, um, sometimes that's a bit of a challenge. Uh, Yogyakarta, we are quite fortunate. Um, they're good hotels, the suppliers are quite professional. But if you slightly go out of the beaten track and try to find suppliers, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's sometimes a bit of a challenge, Yeah. I think it's still a challenge even in Jakarta and Bali where there's a great concentration of hotels. So you're not, you're not on your own there. <laughs> Correct. One of the things which really uh, intrigues me is the fact that um, culture is actually part of sustainability as well. And you are one of the leading cultural preservers of, of, um, in the hospitality industry. And there's not that many of you who are saying, originality of culture is something which um, in preserving that is important. Correct. I, I think it has to do with social sustainability, isn't it? it, it and, and, and fortunate enough, this hotel has a rich history and I'm very proud of that. And uh, having the, the palace next or within our compound and, and the whole culture, the Javanese culture, which most of the locals don't even recognize anymore, isn't it? So when I came here, when during the COVID, I, I was really looking at, at ways, what can we do differently? I have a great pendolpo, a great venue. And, and people were hungry to really keep the culture alive. And, and, but there was no showcase for them. There was no way of how to teach the people the Japanese handwriting, how to do the, the Japanese traditional dancing. And especially during COVID, because we, People were like, oh, we cannot get people gathering together, not big groups. And, and we had the discussion. And, and finally, we started again in, in October, November, um, with our Pendopo activities. And, and that's really close to my heart, to really see the local community getting there, performing, practicing, and hopefully when COVID is gone, we start performing again for the broader public. But, but, but it's so great to see. And, and, and my staff were confused because everybody's thinking locals don't like culture, which I don't believe. 
I think the fact is the locals doesn't know their own culture because they were never exposed to it. And now with the COVID, 90% is domestic, 98% is domestic traveling, and they're actually quite interested to see all the activities happening. And I'm very glad to hear that, but you're quite right. Indonesia has adapted to the, the internet, to the mobile phone culture, oh. and one generation has forgotten its, um, its own unique and wonderful culture. So the fact that you are curating them and bringing them back is absolutely, is absolutely wonderful. But here you are in uh, Georgia, which is considered to be the home of in Javanese culture, that you are the, the, the center of it all. How is Georgia taking the whole sustainability message? Have they, has the city, um, the, sorry, the provincial government got some plans going there as well? Um, they are getting there. I, I, I think it was a bit of an issue more about COVID and everybody was looking at the business side of it and what to do after COVID because Jokja was always used to be crowded and a lot of expats coming in and the Kraton was doing okay, the museum was okay and they had a performance at a Pabanan and, and, and they did the normal things but they never went actually in depth and, and really look at different ways of doing it. And, and I think that's something what COVID has teached us. We need to start thinking out of the box and what can we do differently? Because we cannot have the 200 gala dinner at the Pabanan anymore. It just doesn't work that way at the moment. So, so what else can we do? I have a ballet kanban and you can have a nice setup, a nice dinner for 12 packs, which is social distancing and you have your culture. So I, I, I'm in talks with, with the chief of tourism uh, with some other stakeholders and, and really see what else can we, can we do and really bring that culture, the Javanese culture, back on track. And, and, and again, I'm fortunate enough to, to have my space and, and, and to have the history in my own backyard. You know, it's, a, it's a wonderful hotel. Um, I've stayed there many times. Mm. First, first time over 40 years ago. Wow. Well before renovation, when it was still... Um, still in its old development stage. Now, sustainability for us is important. Do you think that the modern travelers also think it's an important part of choosing where they stay? Do people look and see if you're plastic conscious, water conscious, energy conscious, and you're a green hotel? Do people look at that? Yes and no. I, I think it slightly depends on the destination people are going to. Um, I, I think if you get international travelers going to a place like Maldives, for sure they will start thinking of being sustainable, isn't it? I think if you go to Indonesia, and when you go to Jakarta, maybe to Jogja, I don't think it's really in the forehead of your head. But if you go to Bali and you see the beaches and you see the garbage and you see what's happening in Bali, I think it will be a point of choice and a point of reference for the clients to choose a sustainable hotel and or product. So, so I, I really believe it, it depends a bit on, on, on the location. And of course, it's a lot of education. I do hope, though, that, that, that after this whole COVID episode is over, that people start thinking slightly differently. And, and, and you see that that trend of mindset already changing, isn't it? That, hey, how, how did COVID along? How, how did it came along? Was it man-made? Was it natural, what can we do? So, so I do believe that people start thinking differently. And, and, and now it's up to us to really educate the market and say, hey, we as a destination can be more sustainable. I know that one of my clients here in Jakarta um, puts on their website pretty close to the top 15 specific things they do to be sustainable, including mm automatic electric switches with people centers and so on and so forth. So it is becoming something of a marketing tool when you do it properly as well. Correct. Yeah. So I, I, I do believe in that. I do believe in that. It, it Again, it depends a bit on the location and of course what you can do. Um, I love to do it. Will that happen in the near future? Not in the near future, but in the longer term, yes. I love to have that on my website and say, hey, I can save that much amount of waste. I say that much amount of energy, water, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But of course, that's the whole system which we need to set up. There, there are some very good examples of that now. Um, 
the Alila and Semenyak, um, for example, yeah. Zero Waste Landfill. They've achieved that state in years of hard work to get there, and they proudly proclaim that. Um, so there's, there are there's some very, very good examples out there. And I know that you are leading the way in Georgia, um, and that will become a point of difference, mm. which it is important. And even if it's not, it's important for everybody, your staff, your stakeholders, your shareholders, to know right. that you're doing the right thing. That's really important. No, I, I, fully, I fully agree with you. And, and, and as I said, if it's not for the public, it's at least for the team. And, and, and you have a challenge and, and we look for the future of the generation. And, and that, that's really a philosophy which we need to teach our own team and so on. And then it grows as a bigger community. And how do you plan to take the world and the world forward? I know we're going to see... You're, as you said, you're on domestic travel at the moment. We're going to see an easing of international borders sometime during this year. Um, are, you, are you ready for the building back better? Are you, are you ready for the, the influx again? Is everything ready to go when the borders are open? Well, we, we are always ready um, and we have to be ready. And, and, and I'm looking forward to have back the rock fancies again and bustling streets again. And, and things happening and being able to showcase the culture we have to, to the foreigners. And, and it's, we, we had now six, seven months of, of, of getting the hotel ready back on track. And I think everybody went over that whole hurdle of what to do. It, it's surviving mode at the moment, um, but that gives us a great opportunity to improve, uh, do a lot of training, do a lot of sessions with the team, um, actually, what we are doing now with the team, I'm trying to immerse them, not me, uh, the team is doing that, in, in, into the Javanese culture. And, and I'm looking even into Javanese lessons and um, trying to change the organization chart with Javanese and the local Cretan history, uh, which is actually quite quite nice path of going. And we really want to put Embrook Mo as the center of the Javanese culture. Fantastic idea. Absolutely supported all the way. Um, mm. That comes to the end of the formal part of our discussion. Um, we'd like to thank you very much on behalf of MVP for your support. And we will support you, everything that we can do for you. Um, so on behalf of MVP, uh, thank you very much to Herman Kourouak, General Manager of the Royal Amberuk Hotel in Jogjakarta, the new center of Javanese culture in, mm. um, in Jogjakarta. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. <laughs>